startling video from Chile earlier this evening. Latest information indicates that it was a magnitude 6.7 earthquake that struck off the coast of Chile and then several very powerful aftershocks had followed. Uh, and this had actually occurred 61 kilometers off the coast. Yeah, so now some photos. We've been tracking this casual on social media. This one's pretty cool because it actually gives you an idea of where this community is. A lot of tourists go here. It's right by the ocean and then in behind the mountains. So what you're looking at here, some dust because we're dealing with landslides that have been triggered. And then people that have been evacuated from the coastline. A couple more photos we want to share with you uh, just showing some of the dust that has just been flying from these landslides. Mm. But but here's an interesting shot of the people who are just fleeing. Yeah, it's a sad shot. It's kind of a scary shot. It gives you the idea of how, you know, imminent, how scary this really must be for the people. So mm -hmm. I urge you to check it out on our website, theweathernetwork.com. We have a full write up. And of course, as details become, uh, you know, Yuck. unveiled to us, we will be sharing them with you. Yeah, so this just gives you a better idea of where it was along the northwestern part, just off the coast again. Here at home, we are dealing with active weather as well, Kasia. That's right. So, happy St. Patty's Day to you. Finally, <laughs> drier conditions along the B.C. coast. I know it's been raining day in, day out, day in, day out, so Monday shouldn't mm -hmm. be too bad. And also tracking some active weather, that moisture along the international border, but into the higher elevations in Alberta. Southern parts of the province, we are tracking some light snow, even some mixing, and then the cold air that has made its way in across eastern Canada. Indeed, we've got sun and clouds though, so we're looking at relatively settled conditions for your Monday. Uh, cool again tomorrow, but not as cold as today was. Yeah, which is good news for many as we get closer and closer to spring. Finally, starting to see a break from the active weather for the most part in Atlantic Canada. High pressure slides in. We have been tracking that sea effect that is expected to set up Monday into your Tuesday along the western shores of Newfoundland. And to the other coast, we go in Vancouver, sunshine for Monday. Ah, but Tuesday, it all goes downhill from <laughs> here. Rain comes back to the region. Uh, and then Wednesday as well, tapering off a little bit. Thursday, Friday, not so bad. But the one common denominator, you've got nice and seasonal conditions temperatures. Yeah, in Edmonton, three degrees for your daytime high. Monday, watching out for the mixing. Tuesday, a high of six. And Wednesday, the rain's back. Stay with us. More on your active weather coming up. This You're watching the Weather Network on this Sunday evening. Kasia Badurka with you here alongside Michelle Nelson. First, an international update. Mm -hmm. An earthquake struck off the coast of Chile earlier this evening with several very strong aftershocks. Yeah, we will have an update on that throughout the hour, so make sure you do stay tuned. But right now, let's take a look at the active weather here at home because we are still dealing with a number of warnings further east with this storm that is going to push out. And essentially, it's about the snow and the blowing snow. So any of these forewarned areas, yet yeah, we're still picking up a pretty hefty amount of snow through the evening and the overnight, and eventually, eventually subsiding. <laughs> However, we still do have some sea effect flurries that are going to be building, and we're talking a good amount, 5 to 10 centimeters of snow in behind that system, and then the sea effect will be ramping up throughout the day tomorrow. Yeah, and further south in southern parts of Newfoundland, tracking another system that's just going to skim by, but that's where we could see 5 centimeters centimeters locally a bit more. Let's head uh, further west now. We go where the uh, tomorrow also cold and unseasonably well below seasonal but not yes. as cold as it was today. Yeah. I, I'm using that word cold so oh, much. I know it's because it just doesn't seem to end Kasia. We're looking at minus 15 to minus 30. That's in the purple. It will start to push out as we head towards Tuesday into Wednesday in southern Ontario. Still in northern parts of the province. It is going to be quite chilly. That's right. So we're talking about a daytime high tomorrow for the city of Toronto around minus five then I believe two degrees Tuesday, mm -hmm. Wednesday six. Oh, I'm giving away so much. We're so excited about this. High pressure tomorrow, but then our next weather maker moves in on Wednesday for southern Ontario. To the north, though, as early as Tuesday, snow flurries, wet snow for you in northern Ontario, southern Ontario. I mentioned the rain. Yeah, mostly a rain story as temperatures are on the mild side. Now stay with us. Coming up. Oh. All right, happy Sunday evening in the GTA. Kasia Paderka with you here, and that is not on my bucket list. No polar bear dips for me, especially when we're seeing temperatures like this. So, yeah, it's cooler yet again. Minus 17 for the city of Toronto, minus 19 for you in London, minus 16 in Kingston. You get it, don't you? Monday morning, uh, much the same, really. Temperatures not rebounding for the early commute. But I want to take you first to video before I tell you what kind of a daytime high 
you have going on for tomorrow to Waterloo, a water main break, right? And this occurs because of your typical freeze-thaw cycles, kind of like why potholes happen and obviously we've had so many of those this year because of those extreme temperatures that we were seeing. When you see the purples on the map it means it's very cold but they will eventually be dissipating because of an area of low pressure. See that? We even have the blues and we're even going to get the lighter blues into the region, into southern Ontario. Yeah, I know I'm talking in color code here uh, but it's a low pressure system that's going to be boosting up the temperatures into our long range. High pressure for tomorrow and the next day really but then this low is going to be bringing southern Ontario rain but first it'll arrive as snow and it's going to be arriving through the overnight Tuesday into Wednesday so Wednesday morning commute could be pretty missy top off your windshield washer fluid for that all right I want you to stay with us we have information coming up on so did you get it out of your system? The green beer, did you celebrate St. Patrick's Day today? Kasia Badurka with you here with a look at your St. Patrick's Day, the official day forecast for tomorrow. But first I wanna take you to our website, show you a really compelling video that's kind of scary. But first, at first take, you know, you look at it and you think, Oh, beaches, sunny skies, beautiful sand, but you notice that people are literally running from the coast. People have been evacuated from the coast of Chile due to an earthquake, magnitude 6.7, earlier today. We have a write-up on this on our website. I urge you to check it out, so uh, stay with us here as well. We do have an update coming up throughout the show. Now, I mentioned St. Patrick's Day, the big day tomorrow. Are you prepared? Are you wearing green? What should you be wearing in the city of Vancouver? Well, we continue to see the showers through the overnight, but if you scroll down to your Monday forecast, oh, isn't this lovely? And I picked the, oh, I thought I picked the green color there. Eight degrees and sun and clouds. So that's great news for you. I take you now to Winnipeg, where it's a little bit of a different story. We've got cooler conditions. We've got temperatures, minus one. You know, that's not too bad, right? Uh, and you've got sun and clouds. And sun and clouds right across the board. Not a bad forecast, really. We are dealing with some snow showers, by the way. This is happening now. And we do have a snowfall warning in effect for areas north and a little uh, east of Winnipeg. So five to 10 centimeters of snow locally, you could be seeing a little bit more and it is uh, quite gusty as well. Now, before I show you Ontario's forecast for tomorrow, hey, I gotta show you this video. I showed it yesterday, earlier today. I can't help myself. Shorts and t-shirt weather back in 2012. Can you believe it? And meanwhile, today, today, what a huge difference. Oh, it brings a tear to my eye, actually. Natalie Thomas, she was at the St. Patrick's Day Parade earlier today. And, you know, even though people had to wear the really heavy jackets, people were in super high spirits nonetheless. Temperatures for tomorrow in Toronto, minus six. And finally, I'm now going to take you to Halifax. Halifax. People are certainly excited to celebrate St. Patrick's Day there, minus four and sun and clouds. What about your area? That's coming up. This weather swing. Well, Monday is the first day of March break for some of you, right? So an ideal place to go RVing, I would say the south coast of BC. Drier conditions, finally. Temperatures right around where they should be. And by that, I mean about eight, nine degrees for you in Vancouver. So that's where you want to be on your St. Paddy's Day Monday if you're going to go RVing anywhere. Tuesday, back to seasonal conditions across the Prairie provinces and a little more active towards Ontario. The weather... So did you get it out of your system? The green beer, did you celebrate St. Patrick's Day today? Kasia Badurka with you here with a look at your St. Patrick's Day, the official day forecast for tomorrow. But first I wanna take you to our website, show you a really compelling video that's kind of scary, but first